we just witnessed the scariest part about the Kansas City Chiefs. So we're gonna be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video, and if you want more Kansas City Chiefs news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is the secret to Kansas City Chiefs success that will help them come Super Bowl time. Since Patrick Mahomes took over as starting quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs in 2018, the team has been defined by a dynamic offense. This season, however, the defense has been carrying the reigning Super Bowl champs in their 7-2 start. The Chiefs' defense has caught up to its offensive counterpart, wrote a Yahoo Sports NFL reporter Charles Robinson. And when the generational quarterback needs to be carried for a few Sundays or maybe even through February, Kansas City has put the unit together to make it happen. In a 21-14 win over the Miami Dolphins in Germany, the Chiefs' defense held Miami to 292 yards, its second lowest figure this season, and the D got in on the scoring itself. Kansas City recovered a fumble that safety Brian Cook returned it for a 59-yard TD, which gave the Chiefs a 21-0 lead with 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter. The Dolphins lead the NFL in points, 31.4, and yards per game, 435.3, so the dominant performance shows the Kansas City defense is one of the best in the league. I can probably tell you, halfway through the season, this is the best defense I've ever played with. Chiefs tight end. Travis Kelsey said following the victory, per NFL.com. They come up in huge moments, man. Honestly, they've been saving us in a lot of situations. The Chiefs are 12th in the league in points scored, 23.1. Over the past four games, however, the unit backtracked, averaging 20 points per game, thanks in part to an inexperienced receiving core that's hindered Mahomes. The two-time league MVP has thrown eight interceptions, tied for second most in the league. Thankfully for KC, the defense is second in the NFL in points allowed per game, 15.9, trailing only the Baltimore Ravens, 13.8. If the defense keeps excelling, it will take the pressure off the Chiefs' offense and could help the team capture its third Super Bowl title in five years. Every season under Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, the worst the Kansas City Chiefs have done is comfortably make the playoffs and take the AFC Championship game down to the wire. That's a level of success that no club has come close to reaching dating back to 2018, with Kansas City winning a couple of world championships during that span. This year, it's expected that the AFC West crown will once again belong to the Chiefs. There are several other AFC contenders rounding into form, though and the 2023-24 version of Reed's Bunch is dealing with an identity crisis that could leave it vulnerable. Outside of a Week 8 loss to the Denver Broncos, the Chiefs have established a floor as a team with a shutdown defense and an offense that, while inconsistent, is generally fine in the grand scheme. Flashes of a high ceiling haven't been nearly as frequent as in years past. Sunday's win over the Miami Dolphins was a great example of that phenomenon. Two separate drives resembled the Chiefs of old, but the rest were representations of the possible new normal. Is that ceiling reachable on a consistent basis? Is it real? The answer is complex. On one hand, the offense seems to be drifting closer and closer to being an average unit every week. Entering Monday's play, Kansas City ranks 12th in points per game, 15th in points per play, and 15th in touchdown percentage in the red zone. Drops are a major issue. On the other hand, the Chiefs rank fifth in EPA per play, fifth in dropback EPA, and seventh in overall success rate. Where are they actually as an offense? Likely somewhere in the middle, a fringe top 10 group. Is that good enough to win a championship with a top shelf defense? Is that floor salvageable for the season? Sure, although it significantly decreases the margin for error. How can Kansas City find its ceiling? The answer isn't comprised of just one thing. At the top, wide receiver play does need to improve. There can't be constant drops or miscommunications, not to pick on only him, but Sky Moore can't run an awkward route that leads to an incompletion like it did on Sunday. Timing must improve across the board, and Mahomes is a part of that solution. He's played a hesitant brand of football in 2023, hands down the most reserved he's been as a professional. Play calling and scheming must also be taken into account. Situationally, the Chiefs have put themselves in tough positions by dialing up second-and-long runs or ill-advised plays on short yardage downs. 
Reed and offensive coordinator Matt Nagy's personnel usage at receiver holding rookie Rashi Rice back a bit and almost completely phasing Kadarius Toney out of the game plan, for example, has been far from perfect. From a coaching standpoint, the Chiefs aren't at their best. The second story is Kansas City Chiefs rookies that have made a huge impact on the team. The Kansas City Chiefs are hitting the bye week at the perfect time. It's the mid-season mark and they carry a 7-2 regular season record after defeating the Miami Dolphins in Frankfurt, Germany. Things haven't been perfect, but the Chiefs are at a good point at this juncture of the season. They've even managed to get a good amount of help from their 2023 rookie draft class. It's not quite the same level of help and performance that the team saw from the players selected in the 2022 NFL Draft, but it's hardly something to scoff at. Below, we'll provide rookie report cards for each player in the order they were drafted, and we'll even include an undrafted free agent, too. Disclaimer, no grades for sixth-round DT Keandra Coburn, but if we did do them, they wouldn't be good. From a statistical perspective, there are probably a lot of Chiefs fans who think that Anudike Uzoma has been a disappointment. Frankly, I think he's ahead of the curve. Sure, he only has 10 total tackles, a half sack, and seven pressures on the year. Yet, the 21-year-old pass rusher out of Kansas State has been active and played in every game so far this season. There are other first-round draft picks at the position who were selected ahead of Anudike Uzoma who can't say the same. As much as I'd like to see him take off a bit more in the second half of the season, I don't think it'll happen quite like it did with George Karlaftis last year. Unless, of course, there happens to be an injury at that position group. That said, he's getting valuable repetitions behind some really, really good defensive ends that will benefit him down the line. Easily the most impressive of the Chiefs' rookies, he's proven to be one of the best rookie receivers in this draft class. His stats stack up with the best rookie receivers of Andy Reid's tenure as an NFL head coach. Through nine games this season, Rice has recorded 32 receptions on 41 targets for 378 yards and four touchdown grabs. He's tied with Travis Kelsey for the team lead in touchdown receptions so far this season. It's all going to be about building on that performance in the second half of the season for Rice. The biggest thing might be eliminating the occasional drop from his repertoire. Rice is coming off a game where he saw a career high in snaps and he mentioned after the game that things are really starting to come together for him. He's being trusted with option routes on certain plays, which is a big development in earning the trust of QB Patrick Mahomes. Morris hasn't really had much of a chance to play for Kansas City yet. He's been coming in for some jumbo formations, and he's clearly the team's choice for backup left tackle since Prince Tega Wanago went to injured reserve. In his one snap in pass protection all year, Morris stonewalled a Khalil Mack bull rush on a quick throw. Still, the sample size isn't big enough to give him any sort of a grade just yet. The Kansas City Chiefs won Sunday 21-14 against the Miami Dolphins in Frankfurt. The Chiefs won in a game they were favored to, but maybe shouldn't have ended as close as it was. Despite the win, the Chiefs have an obvious need to address their problems on offense, problems the defending Super Bowl champions haven't faced in a while. The Miami Dolphins came out sluggish in Germany, posting a goose egg in the first half. The usually explosive Dolphins came out in the second half and scored an unanswered 14 points. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs were not able to score in the second half, making the game closer than it maybe should have been. The Chiefs' defense ultimately stepped up and stopped the Dolphins on a crucial fourth down and was able to kneel out the game. The Chiefs seem to have responded to head coach Andy Reid's statements after last week's loss to the Denver Broncos. They came right out and scored a touchdown on their first drive, a short catch by Rashi Rice. After that initial drive, though, it was challenging for the Chiefs to put anything together. Struggles in the run and pass game led to this. Travis Kelsey was not involved, and other receivers struggled to make separation with defensive backs. In previous years, the Chiefs have had other playmakers who led to dominating offenses. Wide receivers Tyreek Hill and Juju Smith-Schuster both helped to win a Super Bowl for the Chiefs. However, the Chiefs lack a reliable receiver to pair with Kelsey. When Kelsey is taken out of the game by the opposing team, the Chiefs seem to be lost. If the Kansas City Chiefs hope to defend their Super Bowl championship this year, they need to look within and address their glaring problem at receiver. The third story is Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid hails Kansas City Chiefs after victory over Miami Dolphins in Frankfurt. 
how fitting it would prove of a Steve Spagnuolo unit to play a defining role on his return to Frankfurt as the Kansas City Chiefs march to victory over the Miami Dolphins on Sunday. Spagnuolo, who coached for the Frankfurt Galaxy in 1998, watched on as a Trent McDuffie-inspired unit contained one of the league's most potent attacks to underline the story of the season so far for the defending Super Bowl champions. Tyreek Hill was limited to 62 yards while Tua Tagovailoa threw for a season-low 193 yards as Mike McDaniel's side suffered their third loss to a team with a winning record this season. The fact that they're so good at all three levels, they're deep, said Patrick Mahomes. Guys rotate in. They can play. It's hard to get everybody snaps. That's how good they are. It's got to be the top defense in the NFL.